Scientology Spiritual Headquarters is located right here in Clearwater, yet many of you may not located right here in Clearwater, yet many of you may not know much about one of the most secretive and controversial organizations. Now, a third generation Scientologist who was born into it, and she is also the niece of the Church of Scientology's worldwide leader. She is speaking out in a bombshell book called Beyond Belief, My Secret Life Inside Scientology, and My Harrowing Escape. Jenna Miscavige Hill joins us now. Thanks for being with us. And your parents were high-ranking members, and you spent most of your life as part of the church's inner circle. Why did you decide to write this book now? Well, I actually, I first left in 2008, and I, I did speak out um, about the church then, but, you know, the book is really a good way to get the, the whole story out there, you know. Um, sometimes the story becomes a little bit about Tom Cruise, which is, you know, is an important way to draw attention to it, but the book is a good way to have everything there, and, you know, also, obviously, the, the whole purpose is to raise awareness about what is, you know, not just some benign religion, but actually a destructive and abusive organization. And tell us a little bit about that. I know in the book you spent a lot of time talking about how you really didn't see your parents much growing up, and, and you spent a lot of time at a Scientology boarding school. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that that is one of the most destructive aspects of the church is its treatment of children and family. Um, and yes, when I was six, I was um, sent to what's called the ranch, which was for children of executives of the church's most dedicated order called the Sea Org. And um, we were basically only allowed to see our parents once a week for a few hours on Sunday morning. Um, that I was there from when I was six until I was 12. And then from when I was 12 until I was 18, um, I only saw my mom twice and I only saw my dad four times and the majority of those times were for less than an hour. What was a typical day like? You had mentioned there was a lot of manual labor. Yes, at the ranch, you know, we were run like a military organization. You know, we had uniforms, we lived in dorms with seven other girls, which was separated by a bathroom from seven other girls. And, you know, we had birthing inspections, we had military close order drilling, we had uniform inspections. We spent four hours a day doing heavy manual labor, which was everything from rock hauling to digging trenches for irrigation. You know, on Saturday, we did labor the entire day. So we did 25 hours of heavy labor per week. What was the worst thing when you look back that happened to you as a Scientologist? I mean so many bad things happen from being held into rooms you know being forced into doing confessions from being separated from my husband um, who at the time was my fiance you know from being deprived of sleep but you know um, you know so many things that it's hard to get them all out in one breath but the the worst part I believe is the, actually the robbing of your education when you're a child and taking away your childhood and taking away from your parents where you're you know you have no one to turn to you have no one in your corner and essentially brainwashing you from such a young age. I think that that's definitely the worst part, especially now that I have my own children. You know, I'm really able to see how vulnerable they are and so yeah. Now, the Church of Scientology says it does not engage in any activities that mistreat, neglect, or force children to engage in manual labor. Claims to the contrary are false. What is your reaction to that? My reaction is that they're lying. There's too many accounts of this, you know, for people to actually be able to believe them anymore. I mean, how many of the children at the ranch actually have a high school diploma? They didn't give out diplomas there. They didn't. They didn't issue credits. You know, are so it, it would be interesting to see some of these actual objective, you know, evidence that you know. I mean, it's impossible for us to have gotten a diploma there. We were not an accredited school. You know, the, the, the ranch itself, the pictures that they show of how beautiful it is, is only a testament to how hard we worked. We did all of that work. And so, yeah, I mean, they're lying. <laughs> Now, you also talk in the book about your uncle's power over the church and even mention members who fear him. And you even called your uncle evil. Explain mm -hmm. why. I mean, he's the head of this organization, which basically, you know, is responsible for everything from child neglect and abuse to separating people from their families 
to, you know, having people who work there like 100 hour weeks and get little to no time off. And it's supposed to, it, you know, when I was young and, you know, I thought it was about helping people. And, you know, I thought, you know, maybe we have to make some sacrifices in that name. But there's so many things that are imposed on its members and so many sacrifices that are so pointless. They're not helping anybody. And so it's almost, it's just, it's just about control and power at this point. What would you want to say to your uncle or ask him if you had a chance to see him again? I mean, unfortunately, like, I don't really have anything to say to him. I know that he's aware of the damage that he's done to me in my life and other people who are there. I mean, I would be interested to know if he even believes in Scientology anymore or if it's just about, about the power. But, I mean, I doubt that he would be forthcoming with me anyways, so... And, and you spend a lot of time here in Clearwater at the headquarter, worldwide headquarter location. Tell me what typically happens here and share yeah. some of your memories. Um, well, I went to Florida when I was, uh, we, I lived in Clearwater from when I was 12 um, until I was 16. And um, I was a Sea Org member, so we worked, you know, 14 hour days. Um, and, you know, we were only occasionally allowed to have a day off every other week if we were doing good at our jobs um, but um, for years at a time that would often be canceled and you know we frequently got half pay or even no pay full pay is only $45 um, you know I was not I was told that I was forbidden to call my parents I was not allowed to go back to California um, when I was about to, I was told that I could not go back and be with my parents and my brother. Um, I was actually physically restrained from doing that. And I mean, we only went to school once a week when we were there. So that, that's what's happening there. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the best memories. You know, there may be some Scientologists who are watching this interview and probably upset that you are attacking their beliefs. What would you say to them? I would say that, you know, uh, unfortunately, I'm sure it's upsetting for anybody who believes that they're helping people. But I mean, look, look at what's really going on there. Everything I'm saying is the truth. And they probably know that because they're there and that's happening, or at least it was happening when I was there. Um, so, you know, open your eyes. How is the Scientology experience different for celebrities? Um, celebrities have their own their own churches, you know, they have celebrity centers, which has its own special entrances, it ha they have their own special classrooms, and, you know, they have their own, you know, the highest trained counselors. You know, they're not treated as harshly as regular members. They're not hounded for donations. You know, they don't have people showing up at their house asking them for money. Um, that sort of thing and obviously they don't have like child laborers working at the celebrity center the darker side of the church is sort of kept out of view for them um, so and yeah. as, a, as a mother I have to ask you you have two young kids were you afraid of intimidation or even scared to speak out I mean I've been speaking out since 2008 and I think that you know at that point, I had to decide that I was no longer going to be intimidated by them. And I think that there's a certain, like, the more out there you are, the less likely something bad is going to happen to you because everybody knows, you know, everybody would, that would be their first suspicion. So, you know, to that degree, no, I'm not, you know. I mean, we were followed by, uh, for a month by PIs, uh, private investigators, in 2008 when we first spoke out, but I think that they know now to sort of leave us alone because we're going we're gonna to let people know if anything happens. What has helped you heal from this experience? Counseling, or did you actually look to another religion for help? Um, no, I mean, it's mostly been talking about it, you know. I mean, there's several websites out there, one including my own that I, that we made, I made with um, two other um, girls called xscientologykids.com, and it offers forums and that sort of thing where um, ex-scientologists can share their stories and um, find people, you know, who have been through similar things and have people that they can talk to about it. And so really there's a large community out there of ex-scientologists who you know talking about it is therapeutic for everyone and you know another thing that's actually been really therapeutic for me is having my own kids like you know being able to experience childhood again through them you know yeah it just the, the, having kids always makes the world a more magical place when you see everything you know through their eyes mm -hmm. and does it make you upset as well to to think that that was taken away from you have you I guess reconnected with your parents 
Yes, I've definitely reconnected with my parents, and I definitely have had some questions, you know. But I mean, they're out. They actually, my parents actually helped me to get out. And you know, right now, you know, unfortunately, you can't change the past, but you know, they can apologize. And now we're we're moving on. They're amazing grandparents to my kids. And so that, that's all I can hope for. So yeah, we have a good relationship now. And last question, anything else that you want to say to our Tampa Bay viewers just about the Scientology headquarter being located here or Scientology in general? Um, I mean, just don't get lured into it, you know, or, you know, if you're interested, find out about it, you know, and if you notice anything bad going on or that looks shady, then please report it because somebody might be really thankful to you, you know, in many years for doing so. Jenna Miscavige Hill, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Now you can read the Church of Scientology's response and see a website that Jenna created for ex-Scientology kids on WTSP.com.